In the first part of this course, we saw how we connected to a port that gave us shell access using Netcat. And like I said, that was one of the easiest, simplest hacks that you will ever do. In this section, we're going to be diving deeper into shell access. So let's together revisit Netcat. And in this example, I'm going to be using Netcat to demonstrate how you can connect to any port. For example, here I'm typing Netcat, the IP address, and I'm connecting to port 80, which we already know by now is serving a website. Now that I'm connected, I need to start issuing HTTP commands. So I'm going to be talking to the server over port 80 using the HTTP commands. One of the HTTP commands that is very commonly used is the get command. They are also known by the way as HTTP verbs. And what the get command does is as the name says, it goes and gets or fetches a website. So right now I'm telling my netcat to get forward slash, which means the root page or the home page using the HTTP protocol version 1.1. I hit enter twice. And as you can see, I get this output on the screen that resembles very closely the website that I have on my target machine. In other words, using Netcat and the command line, I was able to talk to the HTTP server and ask it to serve me a website. So, okay, this is pretty cool, but how is this going to be useful for me when I'm doing hacking? Let me clear the screen and let's go together to DVWA, which is short for Damn Vulnerable Web Application. I hope that by now you managed to discover the username and password. If you haven't already, they are on the web page. So I'm going to use them to log in. And the first thing that I want you to pay attention to is changing the security level for the DVWA. This is, as the name suggests, it's a very vulnerable web application and it's used to practice web hacking. We're not going to be going into a lot of details in web hacking in this course because this is more focused on network hacking. However, I would like to still show you a couple of web hacking examples. We will get into a lot more details when it comes to web hacking in our OWASP top 10 course and other web hacking courses. But for now, I would still like to show you a couple of web hacking tricks that are commonly found. The first thing I want to do before I progress is change the level of difficulty from high to low which is going to be more than enough for the purpose of our demonstration. Then I'm going to go to the upload and this is going to demonstrate the upload functionality. Let me explain what this is. A lot of websites allow you to upload pictures, upload documents, upload videos and so on. So for example, if you are submitting a job application, there's a very good chance that you will have a functionality on the employer's website that will allow you to upload your CV. Sometimes, however, these upload functionalities can be insecure in such a way that they will allow you to upload whatever you want. So instead of them, for example, controlling the type of the file that you are allowed to upload, say if you're uploading a CV, instead of it being restrictive to only documents and PDF files, it might be misconfigured or badly coded in such a way that would allow you to upload whatever you want, including malicious files and scripts and so on. And this is the case with the upload functionality on DVWA. So what I'm going to try and do now is test DVWA to this vulnerability. And I'm going to see if I am allowed to upload anything that I want. And what I'll try to do is upload a PHP shell. I'll show you what this means. Let me start nano and create a file called shell.php. I'll paste this code here. And this code is basically a PHP script that when I interact with it, it will allow me to execute and run commands on the underlying operating system. In other words, if I manage to successfully execute the script and access it, I will be able through the script to run commands on the operating system and interact with my target's OS. To go through a little bit of details on what this command does, you see here the shell exec. This is a function in PHP that allows me to execute shell commands. In other words, it allows me to interact with the Linux shell. And then you see the get parameter. What this tells my script is that I am going to be sending commands through the HTTP get request, which we've already seen using netcat. And then lastly, I'm using the CMD variable 
which we will be seeing in a second in our URL. Let me save and continue. And now what I'll try to do is upload the shell.php file and fingers crossed it will be accepted by the server. So I'll go to the location where I saved my file. I'll open it, I'll select it and I'll hit upload. And it looks like it worked. And as you can see here, and this is a very important step when you're doing real penetration testing, you need the location of where the file got uploaded. Because this is a practice website, the location is given to us. Normally, however, it will be uploaded to an uploads directory or something similar. So let's go to this location and try to locate our PHP script. So I'll go to the location. And it looks like I got nothing returned. And this is good news because normally if the file does not exist, I will get an error that says the file does not exist. However, because I did not get an error, that means the file actually exists. So what I need to do now is run commands through this script. And this is where the CMD parameter comes in handy. You remember when we created our script, we created the CMD parameter. So I'm going to tell my script, run the CMD parameter with the command ls. And here we go. We get an output that says, this is the content of the directory. Awesome. So we got command execution. We are now able to run commands on the underlying Linux operating system. Let me see if I can leverage this a little bit more.